So yeah. Vincent, we're really excited to have you here today. You are you. a special effects makeup artist and you have 35 plus years in the industry. And of course, I'm going to be letting everybody know what your website is and about your work. So let's start with John, though, because we did do the first interview with you. So, John, quickly give us a rundown. Why are we here again? And what, yeah. is, you know, give us some some background as to what brought you here. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is John Stewart. I am the principal investigator uh, for the five year self-funded investigation to find the truth. Very important, just to find the truth of the infamous and well forgotten 1997 Area 51 alien interview that was on the UPN network on a program called Strange Universe. And this was a special one hour documentary on that program in 1997. And uh, just, a, just the elevator pitch 1996, a second rate production company, video production company in California. It's a bizarre call from a, a, a gentleman in his late 50s, 60s, from what we were told. And he says, I've got this three-minute VHS tape showing an extraterrestrial being interviewed, interrogated in an underground facility south of Area 51 in Nevada. The film is from 1991. So they, they bring him in. He doesn't drive. And the director, Jeff Broadstreet, who was working in conjunction with this video production company, second tier, by the way, they were selling the Tim Conway Dorf golf video. I mean, this is not Spielberg Fox Networks, which I think is important in this conversation. And, and uh, if I can jump quickly, I don't expect this to be a debate. I am here to just say, to tell you as a, an investigator reporter, what I've known, what I've uncovered, and to listen to Vincent. And just for disclosure, the minute Vincent and was e his email was sent to me, or a three-way email, I emailed Vincent in three seconds, had an hour and 10 minute discussion with him. I think everyone's gonna find him fascinating. Great guy, hysterical. I'm here to listen, to learn, and not to argue that I, I'm a reporter and, and, and to feed Vincent some things that I have learned and discovered and what my video effects person has found. And to, again, this is, this is a, um, you know, this is a, where we're batting stuff. I hope it is uh, like we're at a conference table, you know, batting ideas and, and possibilities and theories off of each other, trying to get to the truth. Right. And so I, I just want to be clear on that. I think Vince Vincent is a great guy. You know, if I if this is my cousin Vinny, I'm going to tell the judge <laughs> I agree with his witness being a, a expert witness. So, but yeah. So, um, in 2008, Victor comes. In 2008, this whistleblower is dying. He claims, and comes back for another interview, and he's he is utterly upset and pissed off that no credible ufologist has done any research on this video, has done any FOIA requests about the, the facility, about the government program of, of interviewing these beings. Um, no UFO person or FX person has done a serious, credible two-hour documentary. Is it a puppet? Is it real? Why and why not? And he's furious. And, and this is what I would like, I have still sits in the back of my mind. You have a alleged hoaxer coming back going, come on, where are you assholes at? None of you have proven anything. He is pissed off at the UFO people that say it's real. He said, these people are saying it's real on face value. Don't tell me what you think it's real. Tell me you think it's real because you've done years of research on it. You've, you've, gone a, you've gone and had a deep dive with FX exactly. people mm -hmm. of why you think it's real. That is why I'm here, why I've spent five years. And also, of course, the breadcrumb trail on and on and on. And lastly, again, not a debate. I'm here to get educated myself and to, and to hear what Vincent has to say to some of the things of my investigation. In 25 years, not one person in Hollywood has sat at a pool party trying to impress a girl. Mm. Hey, you know that alien? I did that animatronic. We don't have anybody that did the accounting work. 
We don't have anybody that did craft catering. We don't have anybody in wardrobe. We don't know the casting agent who casted, who allegedly would have cast Victor as the the, the government biologist mm -hmm. coming forward. We have a director and the CEO of the video production company. And again, I'm not trying to prove anything. I am telling you the facts. A director and a video of, and the CEO of the video production company after 25 years saying, you know, holding my head metaphorically, John, we did not hire this man. This is not our production. We did not fake this film. He didn't drive. We vetted him. He is a legitimate government biologist. He was on it. He just retired when he brought us this film. And you need to explain to us how a retired government biologist on a pension in 1996 who didn't drive created this fifty to $150,000 production, including the animatronic puppet, finding someone mm -hmm. to make it, the five or six people to control that puppet, hiring and booking the soundstage, craft catering, accounting, central casting, a wardrobe, hiring terrible producers who made, in my opinion, the worst hoax documentary video of an alien ever. The doctors are in short sleeve scrubs, not biohazard suits. The two military people, you see their shoulders in front of the, in front of the uh, camera. Mm -hmm. um, just the worst video production. Like if you wanted to, this is a, this is an alien. This is an alien interview uh, we've ever seen. Um, so I, I would just like, you know, again, to, to be educated myself, I really, really, really want people to understand. I'm not here to debate Vincent. He's got way more experience in, in, in this, in, in special effects. And I, I, I think this is going to be fascinating if we can at least come to two solid possibilities at the end of this debate. Absolutely. Very well said. Okay. Thank Vincent, you. Vincent, let's, let's hear from you. What's your background and why are you here today? Why are we doing this? Um, uh, I have uh, been doing special effects um, uh, 15 years on the East Coast and about 20 years here in L.A. Um, so I'm originally back from Jersey City, New Jersey, is where I was born and raised um, and mostly did all my work out of Manhattan, New York uh, and on the East Coast until I came out to L.A. in 2001. So that's kind of my background. I've done animatronic effects for uh, major films and independents and prosthetics and puppets, um, you know, probably did um, arguably, and it's not an ego stretch here, I uh, did animatronic wings for Dogma, which uh, for an independent film at that time was probably the, one of the best animatronic uh, angel wings ever done on film. Um, so, and I've worked with and, and have hired some of the best people in the business that have uh, also worked for Stan Winston Studios and for Rick Baker as well. So um, not only my own knowledge, but of people that I've hired or have worked with, um, um, I have an extensive knowledge in animatronics um, and puppetry. Um, so the reason why I was here, um, two re <coughs> a couple of reasons. Um, I'll try and be as concise as I can be, and I won't try to ramble. And if I do, please hold me back. Um, is uh, First of all, I am a believer, 100% in... Um, uh, Non-biological non uh, beings. I'll use the proper terminology. Um, uh, but uh, also I've had experiences in my life when I was younger. Um, uh, one being one spectacular sighting that I cannot explain to this day with a witness. Um, and so I am a believer. So that's one reason why I'm here. Uh, second reason is anything that is going to fog, muddle the works, with stuff that is not true, that is bullshit, um, or in any way is um, of a monetary reason, which is somebody <clears throat> puts out something so that they can make a buck, um, or to even get their ego appeased because they want to become famous in the UFO uh, arena, which um, even though there's quite credible people, I'm, I'm, I'm a UFO amateur investigator myself, amateur, not well known at all. Uh, but I've been, uh, not only my experience has been following this stuff since the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, and so since I was a kid. So anyway, I don't want any monetary things to get in the way, any kind of um, fake information getting out there. Because if the real information comes out, it muddled with fake information, 
will make it that much harder for the real information to be proven. So that is that is one of my my things. The other things were, and no, I don't want to go into a debate with John. I talk with John. John's a great it's guy. A good, Vince, Vince, that's a Vince, that's a great point. Thank you for making that very, yeah, very, no very true. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other the other thing is, um, is that when he talked about certain special effects and what years and what's capable or not capable, John was not in the, in the proper knowledge of that, and he seemed very um 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 aggressive in those opinions on the two podcasts and seen them on which is redacted as well as yours right uh, that we're on right now so that got me more pissed off than anything else so i um it's my east coast side of me and i was sort of like hey that's a throwdown that's wrong uh this guy's got to know he's wrong this guy's got to stop saying this stuff and and it bothered me because I don't want anything that is not absolutely true out there. Um, so uh, on, on those instances, it, it it bothered me. And then me and John had a phone call about what cables were properly done in the neck and why this could be done. First of all, uh, to break the tape down that I've seen, I've seen this over the many decades. Uh, there was one thing that fooled wait, me. Can we, wait, can we stop here, Vince? Vince, sure. Vince, can we stop here and like let's, yeah. I, I, before we start breaking it down, um, Carolyn, can I like ask like a open question? Absolutely. This is oh great this is about you because, guys. So take it away. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No. Um, so again, folks, you're getting a bird's eye view of an investigator and an expert. So, Carolyn, this is fascinating what you're doing, by the way. And and I just want to clarify one thing. I was lowballing figures of recreating that doll based on what five animatronic experts said to the rocket pictures in that documentary and what people have told me from one year to two or three years ago. Everyone kept telling me 60 to 70 grand on the low end. And people were telling Sean David Morton, you know, two hundred thousand on the on the on the high end. Mm. I'm, I'm Vince. This is what we were being told because um, that it looked like a five man crew of working the blah blah. You know, you know, with the eye movement, the orbital socket movements, and the micro movements, and 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 whatnot. So my my um, my throwing out figures again based on five different people. And, and and I talked to the vice president, uh, a vice president of Disney animatronics division who, you know, who who was in the 75,000 ballpark. So forgive me and believe me. Thank you, Vince, for saying that we had a phone call because that gives us both credibility because we're not shying away from anything. But th that is why I threw out those figures. So so that is what we were told by five different people, not one. So I. I absolutely stand to be corrected. And and again, um, Vince told me on the phone, John, I, I think I could do this for $20,000. So we've got a whole new scope of, holy shit, you know, this, you know, maybe a second tier video production company could do it, but that would call in the, that this director and the CEO who's a Broadway CEO now Broadway shows is a complete liar. I'm just saying. So let me just, so I wanted to get that clear. So Vince, let me ask you this. I am asking yeah, you, exactly, open exactly. any question. I don't know the answer. But, well, okay. Well, answer the money question. And I want, I have a really good starter question. Go ahead. Um, all the quotes that you just said are absolutely 100% true. Okay. First of all, but. Okay. If you took a certain artist out of the out of the equation, the group that he's working for in a company that would charge that. And he had to do it on his own okay. with a friend. And he's a talented okay. sculptor and experienced. He can make okay. a beautiful sculpture, which the alien is a beautiful sculpture, in my opinion. Where it fails is the puppeteering for me. And it doesn't look real to me. That That's where it fails. Now, the cost issue... Okay. If you took a person out of that shop and said, hey, I'd like you to do an alien. I know you work on all these big productions, but we're going to be doing right. this alien autopsy type thing. 
or interview, right. Right. I got about ten or fifteen thousand dollars. Can you pull it off? Okay. Most people, if you were to ask them in a special effects field, as individual artists, if they could do it for that much, like a I'll side hack, a side job, basically, right? Exactly. That's yeah. what I'm getting yeah. at. Side yeah. job mentality. Sure, we no all problem. do. Yeah. If you go to a professional studio and go, "Hey, Disney, how much would you charge me to do this alien?" Right. You're gonna go well. You know, not only do I want to put you know a new swimming pool in my backyard, but maybe go on vacation <laughs> and pay my guys <laughs> my overhead. I'm going to charge you seventy five, yeah. two hundred thousand dollars. So that yeah, it's how you, it, it, it's like hiring a contractor to do a room addition who's got this huge company or calling three guys off a of Craigslist. And saying, now "Hey, can you come it. over on your on the weekend and put this edition up?" Yeah, I get that. Now that makes sense. That's that's where that came from. Also, some of your, okay. your your quotes about back then that couldn't be done. <clears throat> that's not true. We were like I told you, I showed you one of the best examples, and I could go back even further. In 1977, Spielberg hired Carlo Rambaldi to do a full animatronic alien that comes out at the end and has full facial ex, uh, expression with orbital um, right. eyes and the whole deal in that whole footage. And that was done in 1977, I, I believe just under $200,000 back then. So- Carolyn, uh, can, I, can, I, can I talk about that? And, sure, and I, God, I hope, I hope this is gonna give this investigation stuff. credibility. Yeah, oh, Vince, yeah. <laughs> so Vince goes, right, Vince goes, I said, well, yeah, Vince, that was stop motion. And Vince goes, no, it wasn't. And I'm like, wait, the tall alien at the end of close was an actual full animatronic. And he said, yes, it's just the film that was slowed down. So, you know, that, that really, sorry, that really stopped me in my tracks. Like, wow, there's a lot more credibility that this could have been, could have been, um, yeah. you know, an animat animatronic puppet. So I wanted to be clear that that stopped me in my tracks. I always thought that that was like a claymation type stop motion mm. being, and, th and that really threw me for a loop. Yeah. So that, I mean, that being done at that time. So, and I can even go back further. I mean, the octopus in 20,000 leagues under the sea, which was done in the fifties was also a, um, a hydraulically run um, animatronic uh, okay. uh, octopus. Um, now, they had some problems right. with the animatronics back in the 50s, and they did attach some cords to the tentacles, and you could still see those. So animatronic puppets okay. have gone a long way. So okay. that, that well, let, let's start know, with my question I then. I yeah. don't want you out there without absolute proof. Now, the person that went, this, this old man that contacted the production company, why didn't he contact NBC or any okay. kind of... That's, let's start there. Can we start and not there? Some low budget film company that had the door Vince, video. Vince, can I? Can we start there? Carolyn, this is the perfect end. Okay. <clears throat> Again, folks, I'm not debating Vince. These are two people trying to figure this out. Okay. Mm -hmm. He comes. We, we find out the story. Victor, the the whistleblower. He waits. It's smuggled out in '91 of Area 51 by the cameraman, U.S. Air Force cameraman, in a GSA burn bag. Like, oh, yeah, burn this garbage. So that's how we were told it came out. Number two, he goes to, um, oh, my God, I got his name. He was head of non-scripted television for Fox. He just left Warner Brothers. He was a child actor. Um, Mike Dolan, Mike, whatever. Okay, very powerful man. They could not, he was at Fox. So Victor did go to the biggest, one of the biggest TV networks at the time in 96, Fox. Fox said, we got really burned with the alien autopsy, but more importantly, there's no way we're going to leave your name, your legal name off of contracts and whatnot. We cannot guarantee your security. And that's when Victor said, mm, I'm done. Mm. He walks across the street from the Fox lot. Everyone in LA is going to be shaking their head going, oh, this guy's, this is, the, this must be, at least this part is accurate. Kitty corner from the Fox network lot building is a huge newsstand on Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga Boulevard. 
he picks up Variety magazine. He's thumbing through it, and he sees Rocket Pictures selling the dwarf, you know, Rocket Video Production Company. And he figures maybe a second tier, smaller video production company would swing, you know, would be a gunslinger, unlike the corporate world of Fox. He calls Tom Coleman, the CEO, after he called, you know, the secretary puts it through to Tom Coleman. Tom Coleman knows that Jeff, his director, uh, Jeff Broadstreet, is into UFOs, and he knows this Sean David Morton character. And he said, you know, Jeff, take this call. He talks to Victor. And a day later, or even later that day, Victor comes into the t to the Rocket Pictures studios. Jeff Broadstreet told me, quote, he seemed off an off-grid type person. And John, he did not drive. And he produced a tattered uh, Social Security card. Okay, those are the absolute facts from two, from three men, Tom Coleman, Jeff Broadstreet, Jeff Broadstreet's gold bond, his word, and Sean David Morton. Mm -hmm. Vince, here's my question, Vince. Could somebody like my father, an automobile dealer in 1996, let's say, how would he go about contacting an animatronic person? And then, again, I'm asking, this is not a gotcha question. And then, how would he go about coordinating? Remember, he's a biologist from the government. Jeff Broadstreet said for a fact he vetted him. He's a government biologist on a pension. How did, again, not a gotcha question, how do you think he rented the soundstage, craft catering? You had to feed these people. It's union. You know, the casting call, he had to have, he had to have wardrobe for the doctors, the military men. The general on the left is clearly a class A army dress uniform um do, is it possible that the if if it if it was animatronically done that the animatronic person being in the business could have helped him could have said oh i know people i could set this all up what do you what do you say to that again not a gotcha question i'm getting educated no problem no problem first of all all this stuff about catering and and wardrobe and all this other stuff um, you know, there are, like I said, if it's a side job, um, yes. can easily, could easily be done, uh, by going to costume places on their own and putting, it does not, it doesn't have to be a soundstage. It could be the back of somebody's garage. It could be a warehouse. You know, a great you, don't, point. you don't need to hire a studio. You don't need to have a wardrobe person. You don't need to have a makeup Understood. person. You right. have a right. small group of people that say, I want to put an alien interview thing out because of the autopsy thing that came out got a lot of attention and i'll okay. be honest with you maybe the puppeteer or the person that made it don't want to come out because they're not proud of it because it looks bad as far as the puppeteering end of things now could it be real well, okay it just looks very fake. you know it looks just very fake if it is real um okay i'll, I'll try to keep an open mind about that but i don't think my right. opinion that it's and I don't think, um, in hindsight, uh, an animatronic person or a puppet person, that actually the only professional thing that I see about it is some of the movements in the mouth when they open, um, as well as what you said about the eyes and the overall sculpture. Everything else, as far as all the gross movements of it bouncing up and down like a beach ball, um, also the fact that I don't see any hands or arms where you know, if it was a being in distress, would uh, be in a defensive mode of holding somebody's arm or coming up and holding somebody's hand. Unless they had sure, him secured. Sure. Maybe they had the alien secured that he could. No, he was not arms. tied down. Victor was Victor was asked that he was not tied down. And I'm not going to uh, uh, I'm not going to pad my my investigation and say that. Yeah. And uh, Vince, what about. Now, Go ahead. The alien Go ahead was Vince, I'm sorry. Yeah. Whether the alien was devoid of a defensive response because it wasn't human um, is a stretch, but um, you know, well, it was uh, very sick at the time what they said. So I don't know. So, I mean, you know, I mean, back in the nineties for Christ's sakes, I mean, even um, uh, uh, a man who's a friend of mine named Steve Johnson uh, did a thing for Showtime okay. about the Roswell alien. Uh, that was a full okay. animatronic fit, and it was beautifully done. So, I mean, um, okay. I, I in hindsight, maybe the person behind this is not proud of the work because to me, it looks very fake. Now, I'd like you to maybe okay. call back to 
Creekwell, who was on that tape when he was younger. Right. Who's a friend of mine as well. And Rick works, and Rick Baker. And Rick Baker was on that I tape. Mean, Rick Baker have the same opinion, but it, it's yeah. to get, you know, John Crizzle works at the Hensons. He's an incredible animatronics guy. I would really yes. like to know how he feels today yeah. Yeah. about the puppeteering. Because remember, I, when I saw the alien autopsy, I was on the set of Stephen King's Thinner doing makeup effects. And at the time, because of the way when they broke it open, there was this weird crystal thing inside the anatomy that they brought out. I'm like, who the hell would go in that much detail to put this weird crystal anatomy inside this cavity of an alien if it was fake? Right, right. So it fooled me for a good couple of months, right. the alien autopsy, at the time. So you got to remember, at that time, there wasn't a whole hell of a lot going on as far as alien footage. So you got something coming out on TV on a major network announcing – this is possibly an alien autopsy. And there was a certain credibility to it in a way, just the way of seeing in black and white, seeing the strange thing that you've never seen before on a table of people operating it. So at the time, a lot of people were fooled by it. And as we come to believe, we know now with proof that it is. <clears throat> and um, as far as anybody coming out to uh, say, hey, I did that. I, I, I would look at them and go, well, you did a really bad job puppeteering it. Okay. You, know, if you did such a beautiful job with the sculpture and, and, and everything else. I would have also, yeah, okay, it, it can't have low light. Where's the footage of, say, you know, when you're interrogating somebody, somebody's breathing heavy or moving their arms or how they're on. You would automatically, as a documentary filmmaker, when you're covering an interview, you would go down or up. Well, well, that's stretching. This was just for, you know, and I've talked to many uh, people in the military and, and a couple of people, uh, uh, cameraman was just like, look, we're not there to be Steven Spielberg. We are there to do the best job, keeping whatever's in focus and just documenting it for some general in the Pentagon six months later to see. So, I, I, you know, that I understand that. And I want to, I want to say that um, you are right. I was part of helped out on a music video. If anybody, everyone can remember Troy Duffy, he did boondock saints. He was with Harvey Weinstein. Harvey killed his career. The guy sure. was a total train wreck, but I was, I was on the periphery of that crazy group. And Vince, you're right. When he did the music video with his own money, he had people take free wardrobes of, of, uh, of medieval people from Warner Brothers, you know, on the, on the sly. He got, uh, he got a, a, a catering company for three quarters of the price because he was going to pay him cash. And you're right. The Hollywood people did chip in to help him on the production. So what I just want to tell people what Vince did say about that, about the, the, the side gig aspect to this, I, I can say for firsthand, he is totally true. Vince, I know you're not an, I know you're not a, a biologist or um, an, an anatomist. We are told that the, the neck of the being of these beings, rather like humans at the back of our skull is in the middle of the skull and that they are used to a lighter gravity than, than the gravity on earth. I know you're not a biologist or an anatomist. Would a spinal cord in the middle of the head operate and look differently, um, like when it was coughing, than maybe a regular human? I don't um, know. I'm just your opinion. It, it, it's not a... Um, if I was God and I was going to create something like that, it wouldn't make any yeah. sense because uh, maybe the gravity, I don't know, is different on another planet. But right. uh, the gravity on Earth wouldn't be able to hold its head up. It would be basically, you know, hydrocephalic and wouldn't be able to properly um, operate or, or, or function on Earth. So, no, it wouldn't make any sense anatomy-wise that that could, could operate properly with the weight. But what about the spinal cord in the middle of the head? Would it give the head a different looking bounce yeah. or lack of I a better would. word? Okay, it, okay. It, it well, would. that's interesting. Yeah. That's it interesting. Would. Okay. Okay. I have a question, Vincent. You know, I think when we look at these, this video in particular, we're looking at it through human expectations, how we move, how we react. So, uh, and, and not right. when I first saw it, I'm not a professional. 
animatronic or or ufologist, but I tried to look at it through a different perspective. And then I thought immediately about motive. And we talked about this. So what's the motive? What's the end game for someone to, even a wealthy individual, to take 20, 30 grand, whatever it would cost, create right. this video, put it out there, not claim it. All these years, over 20 years later, no one has still claimed it. So what you, you said before to me that money is the big... Well of course, money and power, but, my, but my nobody name. has yet come out and said, I can I, can I prep this Carolyn? Absolutely. Carolyn, Carolyn, can, I need to prep this for Vince. These are the facts, the facts, the facts from, um, Reicher entertainment was the production company that put out strange universe on the UPN network. These are the facts, facts, facts. Again, I'm just telling this to Vince so he can give us a better answer. Absolutely. Uh, the UPN oh. network struggling for money. Reicher Entertainment. Its first four episodes of Strange Universe, no one was paid. This is a fact because their money was stretched so tight. We heard rhetorically what Rocket Pictures was paid for this documentary. And we know what Victor was paid and... And what it would cost on the low end, even hearing Vince on the low end, what that video was cost. No one made any money. I, 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 and that's where I agree with you, uh, uh, Carol Ann. What would be the reason um, for Tom, you know, Tom Coleman to, I mean, we know this guy called out of the blue. So Reicher Entertainment sends this guy to call Rocket. Why wouldn't Reicher make this film on their own and claim he contacted Reicher Entertainment. Why would Reicher Entertainment, sorry, why would Reicher Entertainment, the producers of Strange Universe, get a middleman that they have to pay, well, we were told 100000 for this tape. That's the whole production, the editing, you got it. All in. We heard Victor was paid 30, you know, Jeff Broadstreet, you know, seven, eight grand production, what Tom Coleman had to make, all of the editing, um, hiring the guy from um, uh, from uh, the David Duchovny show, um, uh, the, the UFO show uh, with David Duchovny, uh, the, the black uh, male in that, hiring him. That wasn't cheap for him to be on location and to do and to narrate it and to be on location. So again, I, I, I you know, no one had any money, which is what, which is why after five years I'm still in the batter's box, you know, tapping my cleats, going, throw me another pitch, it, it, it educate me. No one had any money, especially a biologist who didn't drive. How and why was this was this done and created, and for what reason? That's it's a great point, and I don't Go know, ahead, Vincent. Vince, not a gotcha question. No, it's not. It's just a lot to take in all at once, but I'll try and break it down. Uh, okay. First of all, it's being okay. price entertainment and why they would release it. Fox Entertainment released a fake alien autopsy film and probably played, paid a good, great deal of money for that. That went to, um, um, I forget that main guy with the glasses that put it out. Um, um, I, uh, his name Santilli. is Santilli. Santilli. Thank oh, you. Bob the, the, something. Bob, yeah, right. And then the, the other producer was Bob yeah. something. And yeah. Yeah, correct. Santilli. Yeah. So uh, Fox Network released that. And, and uh, right. what it's all about is ratings and money. So if we put this okay. alien, now Reicher Entertainment uh, figured, look how much the, the alien autopsy uh, interview, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, Hoopla, uh, did right. for that company for right. a good amount of time. The now, point. hasn't anybody come at all this time? Because it blew its load. It didn't make the in, in, uh, expected income beyond what they were paid that they thought they yeah, were Yeah, it was a dud. Good point, Vince. Thank you. Oh, wait, it was a wait, dud. Wait, wait, wait. Where was it a dud? Because I saw it. Oh, oh it was. YouTube, yes. But I, I saw the original video on a YouTube channel that didn't get millions of views. Why release it there? What, where was it? Well, that was it. I asked you to send me the, the, the video, John, of where right. you originally. Yeah, that video it was on, get... Vince, it was on YouTube in 96 before it went on, I think, Strange Universe. But I could be wrong about that. This was one of the first videos literally on YouTube. Correct. And, and, and yeah, so so when, when the internet 
or whenever YouTube started, this was one of the first videos. But yes, Carolyn, I have to be honest. From Tom Coleman, from Sean David Morton and Jeff Broadstreet, this did not get the ratings and the it got, got the buzz, but it did not produce the ratings that they were hoping. And most people blamed it on the UPN network not having a strong foothold in the market or or a strong market share. So Vince is not telling Vince is telling the truth there. Okay, so go on, Vince. I'm sorry. The other thing is not to bring uh, Jeff Broad, but I uh, Victor just uh, became a Facebook friend of mine. Uh, Victor Nevada. Oh, uh, um, that's a that's a that's a that's a that's a guy in Europe who's got deep psychological problems. All he's done is look at the film and say the eyebrow moved, the hand. Great, prove that it's not animatronic, which is why I took over and did the deep dive because just saying I'm finding micro movements is great, and I've given him credit in the past, but he's got some hatred towards me and my investigative team because. People are coming out of the work work helping us. So that is not the Victor. Victor died about four years ago, and we know his name. He was a government biologist. So that's, I just want to be clear. Right, yeah. He gave his real name, and then he was asked on his wall about whatever, and he said, go ask Jeff Bradstreet because it's all about money. And that was on his wall uh, or one of the YouTube comments. So there's something going on there with this guy in Europe, whatever his deal is. Well, I paid, I paid, I'm honest, Vince, 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 I paid Jeff Broadstreet a small, a small amount of money to identify or not identify an alleged picture of Victor and give me Victor's first name. So, and, and that enraged Andrew, this guy in Europe. I don't know why. I mean, Jeff Burlington's still under an NDA. So, and if we want the whole story, we're going to have to pay him a lot of money for the documentary. And I don't freaking blame him. He's like, I might get sued if I tell you the whole story. So, yeah. So what this, this whole money thing is and paying somebody a nominal amount to say, that's not Victor. That picture's not Victor. Here's Victor's first name. Um, That's not discredible. And and that's not checkbook journalism. That's trying to compensate somebody who might get sued. So that's the truth on that story. Thank you. Thank you. So, for so go that ahead, up. Vincent. Go What's ahead, the I'm, end game? That's fine. That, thanks for explaining that to me. So, I mean, you're welcome, sir. But yeah, I mean, I don't know what more to say than I it blew its load, and and that's the end of it. And 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 that if it is real, I think we need more proof. We need more. We need more background on the footage. Uh, people to come out. Maybe the old man to come out on tape himself. Um, that that gave the footage in the bag. Where's the bag? Where's photos of the bag backing up the footage? Where's the actual bag? Let people examine they, you know, examine the bag that the film came in. Is it, you know, all of this stuff? Where's the original negative? Yeah. Our Where's documentary, the- our documentary is going to produce the original VHS tape of Victor. Um, and, and Vince, you made a great point. We have now not that Victor's not important. He is because everyone told me in Hollywood, if you prove that guy's not an actor. You kind of prove the movie's real, but we think that the uh, the level above Victor is finding the cameraman who actually picked up this burn bag on the perimeter of Area Five One and snuck it out and took it to Las Vegas, and then uh, a man named Joseph Yeager and Victor both you know conspired to uh, how do we sell this? Who do we sell this to? How do we get this out to the public? So uh Vince you're right. We we've got the VHS. We we are going to have the VHS tape. We're going to show who Victor was. We're going to interview Jeff Broadstreet, Sean David Morton. We've got the military men that were in the room, some of their relatives that we've contacted. Um you know we we have proven with a 95% certainty that this was done on 16 millimeter film which i what a what a side hustle production company guy get a 16 millimeter camera to film this he might because the alien autopsy was 16 millimeter yeah bill mums is quite convinced for about 95 percent that the shutter film rate is 16 millimeter stock 91 mm, you know and that's <laughs> that's pretty you know, I've got the name of the doctor on the alien's left who's still per- 
practicing medicine in Connecticut. I'm not going to go over the investigation. I'm just saying that, that we, we, you're right. When we put out the documentary, Vince, I'll say this publicly. I hope you're part of it in all of your conclusions and in, in, in your theories and your experience. I have, I have one question too. When you Wait, close up on the creature, go ahead. Sure. Sure. You know, just want to tell sure. you this 15 millimeter film back in the eighties, I used to do a, uh, a TV series called monsters all the way into the eighties and nineties. We use 16 millimeter film. So that's not like a big deal. As a matter of fact, Ladies before, the digital, before the digital age, a lot of people were going to 16 because it was cheaper to shoot on. Even some low budget horror films, some of which I worked on, were shot on 16. So it's not a big stretch if you go, oh, back then 16 millimeter. That's not a huge. Uh, it's not a. It's not a. Great Nobody's ever told us that. Yeah, no. I, thank you. Nobody has ever told me that 16 millimeter wasn't this shocking. The only thing I say about 16 millimeter, and I mean that, thank you for that analysis, is that the government used it in document documenting and it was about the uh, mid 90s that everything started going to VHS although somebody has produced a a, a, a segment of the a military aid in the foreground to the to the camera's right holding a Sony like um, a Sony uh, um, handheld view viewing camera that was plugged in. It had to have been to a VHS camera. So, you know, 16 millimeter VHS, you know, it, but it, who knows at this point, but we, I'm just telling you what Bill Mumps said, and no one has ever said that that is not that threat, you know, that huge of, of a deal that it was 16 millimeter. So again, this is, I'm getting educated and I appreciate the, that. The other reason is because, uh, you know, uh, of, of all the filmmakers that I've dealt with in the low budget end of things, a lot of people used to go to Kodak and other filming uh, facilities, and they would have what they called runoffs of 16 and 35 okay. of film that were were not used, that they have in storage, that is older older stuff from that were predated years before that was still good. And that was the cheaper stuff that low-budget okay. filmmakers could get 16 millimeter runoffs or 35 mil, which are called ends, which is say you have a you know a movie ends. that was shot five years ago in 16 and they have an hour of 16 millimeter footage that's blank that yeah. wasn't used right that's right. what a lot of filmmakers would purchase so that that's another thing you can do with a real filmmaker that knows more than i do about that stuff that's more qualified could tell you the same right. thing but i would love to be yeah. a part of the documentary um i have an open mind Done. that find Done. out that the film is fake or real um, I would right. love uh, the military men. I would like clear footage of the of the interview uh, that yeah. is not grainy and on YouTube right. and produced sure. over and over and over. Um, you know, would help a lot. Yeah. And I would like you to find these military men, get them on camera, and have them swear with their family that this is real, and that you know, uh, you know, that they were there. Uh, I would take it more yeah. seriously then. You know, right. and I would just have to say then then the alien is under such duress and right. just looks really fake in person because there are things like if you look at air bodies that have been in an airplane that are bloated and 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 um, after an airplane crash, a lot right. of the photos they look fake, you yeah. know, but it's real. So it, it's yeah. the circumstance well, of something that is real that looks very fake. Right. OK, Click. Carolyn, I got two great questions. These are again. Uh, uh, I think this is this hour has been really fascinating, and and I hope people appreciate it. Vince, at the end, the creature's bottom lip does a, uh, and, and forgive me, but this is a common term in America: a resting bitch face. You know, <laughs> you know, like this. Um, I saw it. So, so what you can do the, if, if it was remote controlled, you could position the RC cables to bend. Am I this way going this? If I was going to do this simplified, I would not be using RC or radio control, first of all. Well, that's okay. what you told me before, but okay. I, all right. No, what, what I said on the phone was how certain things were used from radio oh, control uh, technology. Under, that okay. Technology. One being goldenrod golden cables, 
which are very, very mm -hmm. thin cables that were used in RC controlled airplanes. And okay. they were translated mm -hmm. to puppets. So I would make it cable control, which is a push pull type of mechanism. Okay. Also, there are things called self contained mouths, which Rick Baker made popular on Greystoke, which is you open the human mouth and it was without any cables that are attached outside. It's no, no cables at all, by the way. Um, there's only cables around the mouth area. And when you move the bottom jaw, there's a wire or a cable that's attached to the top lip. And that would actually make the bottom lip furrow and the top lip come out, which is called a self-contained mechanism. So wow. that is one way. Wow. So one of the animatronics person okay. that's smart and adapt to that stuff can do that, as well as just with a cable, which is gluing goldenrod yeah. cable inside the mouth. And as the mouth opens, he can make the, the top lip with the cable glued right behind the lip and make it snarl, make it uh, collapse, make it close, make it open. These are simple yeah. mechanisms of a somewhat uh, professional or, or semi-professional person could have done back then to make that movement. So it's not, an it's not an impossibility is what I'm saying to you. John. Yeah, no, first, interesting. In our first interview, you talked quite extensively about the heart monitor. And that, that yes. thing fascinated me, especially when you went to people in the industry and they said it had to be created. That's right. So let's just talk right. about that for a minute or two. I mean, I know it's outside. Yeah. And I'm going to, oh, I can't believe, no, I can't believe you brought this up because again, I want to be a credible journalist and investigator. And I want to tell Vince what heart monitor specialist told me. And I want to tell Vince what an FX person told me. Because I have no credibility if I if I hide one person or okay. So Vince, this heart monitor, we we did realize it's not a pane of glass. Bill Mums from National Geographic got it where he we see metal around. The, it's an actual thin box, and there's a bullet, a protrusion like a bullet. And we we said to ourselves, my team, we sat there and said, if you're making this hoax video on the cheap, why are you putting a protrusion? The, the shape of a, of a, a cartridge of a bullet on this thing, unless you really needed to put something in there. So it's a real device box and three PhD candidates who did a two year history of physiological monitor said, we have no idea what we are looking at. I called space labs at Hewlett Packard space labs made monitors for NASA. Hewlett Packard was the other company making uh, my physiological monitors in the 80s and 90s, the only two companies mass producing, both engineering departments. One emailed me. I got a 60 something year old crusty guy on the phone from Space Labs. Hewlett Packard said, we, we've got seven engineers looking at this. We have no idea what that is, why the blip is going up and down, why it's stationary, why it doesn't go horizontally across the screen. 13 cardiologists in Mexico said that the blip is coinciding with the coughing and distress of the creature. And they couldn't figure out how animatronically or whatnot you could coincide that. Not saying that, that it was impossible. And finally, the man from Space Labs, 62-year-old engineer, he said he was in the business for 40 years, said, kid, I have no idea what you're looking at. I said, have you ever seen drawings for a monitor where the blip stays. He said, no, you wouldn't have the blip stay. And he, he made some comments like it needs to monitor. It needs to, it needs to go across the screen. That is the form of it's monitoring this electrical impulse from the heart. He said something bizarre, 60 something year old physiological monitor space labs, folks. He did it for NASA. It looks like a one of device. I said, what is a one of device? He said, well, if I had an application, you have an application in science, you can't figure it out. Let's say you try to want to find uranium in the ground, you would build an uranium de detector if there wasn't one. I said, would you build a one of device if an alien from another planet had a weird heart, lung, one organ, and a regular heart monitor wouldn't work? He didn't laugh at me. He didn't hang up. He said, yeah, I, that's exactly what I would do. You'd have to build a special monitor to monitor that special type of organ um, and and I said, you've never seen this on a drawing board. 
You've never heard about it at a trade show? He said, kid, I've never seen this before. I went even deeper as a journalist. I talked to two salesmen that sold physiological monitors for 20 years. I said, come on. I know salesmen sometimes know everything about everything they're selling. You saw it on a trade show. You heard about it. Um, you saw it on a sci-fi, you know, on a sci-fi movie. Both salesmen. One was a, a Spanish guy. He was hysterical. He's like, I'm telling you, what do you need to tell me? I've been selling these things for 30 years. I don't even know what I'm looking at. It's bizarre. And the blip is this greenish white thing. He goes, where did you get this? And I said, on, on an alleged underground government facility. I said, I don't want to look at it anymore. I don't want to be part of it. He goes, all I know is in 30 years, I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. So an FX person said, you could get a laser, put it on, Vince, help me with the vernacular, a servo, and tap it up and down, and it would go back down as you tap it, and that's how you could create the blip where it's not going across the screen. I, now, yeah, I recreated um, um, that experiment with my daughter, and the laser kept hitting the other side of the wall. Uh, we did it again on, a, on a piece of glass, and the laser... But kept hitting the wall and we're wondering why the laser was not hitting the beam. Like, and, and so, but, but we didn't put anything behind the glass. So that's what an FX person told me, a laser possibly on a servo. Go ahead. Um. Yeah. I mean, who's, who's ever involved in, in this thing, if they were, if they got the puppeteer guy, they could have had a creative prop guy come in and, and, and build something yeah. specifically for the scene. And that's my only that's my only retort. I'm not a specialist with monitors. I'm not a specialist right. Understood. In, in kind of medical equipment. So um, and right. I would have to look at it again. But what you said, yes, yeah. can be reproduced. But um, um, as far as you're doing a test, you and you just ex, you just exposed how you didn't do a proper one because you didn't have it. No, I did. I tried to see. Yeah. yeah. So um, a, a clever prop guy or an effects guy who not only builds a puppet, but can do a prop and, and do that yeah. could, could yeah. possibly do that. But again, your best bet is getting the original footage, getting the people that say this is real, that were there to come out and say, hey, I was there. Of course. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yep. And then you'll get... Joe Rogan or these other people that you're, you're, you're vying for to be credible with, you know, a little right. bit, you'll be taken a little bit more seriously than some old footage that was debunked already in the nineties that you're trying to push off right now is real. That's a hard, well, you say it's debunked. Hard, Can you tell me who debunked it? Like Rick, I don't, somebody said somebody from Santa Barbara, Cal university of California, Santa Barbara, Debunk, debunked it. I don't ever remember hearing that anywhere that somebody like literally piece by piece debunked the film. Well, no, other than that, FX that, people if, saying it's fake. If I, if I wasn't, if I'm being a little flippant, I, I what I should say. Was not <laughs> okay. Taken, okay. Was not taken seriously back then because right. Rick Baker, yeah, I, the best in the business, didn't believe it was real. Is the proper vernacular? Yeah, I have P I have PTSD from Victor Nevada in Europe, who everything has to be specific, and you can't mince your words, and you can't generalize. So I have PS PTSD from that dealing with him for a little bit. So yeah, well, I apologize. I, do, I totally I, get what you mean. I think I do, people saying I, I have, it looks I have fake. Skeptic friends about David Garash yeah. aliens and 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 David Fravers right. reports and breaking it down with Mike right. West and. And the arguments right. are endless with Mike West and and I yeah not and I don't get uh, PS uh, I don't get uh, I, I get um, aggravated my East Coast anger temperament comes and goes all right you just right. don't believe it fine you know you don't believe it, you need to see the alien sitting down in front of you drinking tea right I get it that's not gonna happen all right even if you had even if it was on TV that's not gonna happen because you would say the government made a, a deformed monkey in a lab and came out and said it was an alien. You know, so there are some people that are right. so thick right. you're not going to get through to them. You either believe yeah. it or you don't believe yeah. it. I believe it. Right. Okay, but I need yeah. to see some sort of proof, especially if I'm looking at something to me, in my opinion, looks fake. 
So that's where I'm coming from. Understood. Yeah, please. Understood, sir. If you have access to these people, get them out. And, yep, and we do. They go, oh, we're scared and all that. It better be legitimate scared and not because they, they're they not yeah. sure. Get them on tape. Yeah. Vincent, I have a question for you. After the House um, Oversight Subcommittee, <clears throat> David Grush coming out, um, he's saying that there are non or were non-human biologics found at the crash site. Um, right. Has your opinion, I mean, I know, again, you're looking at this video through a, a professional effects person, but has that altered your belief at all or made you say, you know, scratch your head and say, well, you know, we're expecting these aliens to act and behave and look a certain way. Maybe they just don't. Maybe right. that's the way they move. Maybe, you know, like I said, we're looking at them through human eyes. So, like, what's your take on it after the whole David Grush thing, basically, with the non-biologics that everybody's talking well, about? First of all, I believe David. I believe um, 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 that he did get told by higher ups. But the problem is, if I was an insider like him, Honest, I, I can't beat David and I can't speak for it because there'll probably be legal ramifications. I would have blown the roof off. I would have gotten proof. I would have went to a lab. I would have secretly gotten a camera. I would have taken photos. I would have gone. I would have I would have stayed secret for a couple more years until I had the proof in my bag. And I would have True. did like an Eric Snowden thing. OK, yeah. where if I'm going to blow my load, I'm going to really blow my load and say, here, question this. I got this, and this is proof. Okay, right. that's not just conjecture and hearsay. Good point. Good point. But Good I point. believe. David. Didn't he say I he had forty witnesses, like forty people that were six years? Yeah, well, right. So like, he was in the program. I mean, maybe now, it was just that, maybe that, it was impossible for him to get evidence. Yes, I believe. Yeah, of course, I, and I agree with that. And this is the best he could do at this time, and it has helped. Uh, get this out in the forefront, which is something I would never think I would have seen. Now, we've had hearings like this, but not at the congressional level. We've had hearings about this, about the, you know, the military generals coming out saying we were in charge of a nuclear um, a missile base and our stuff was shut down by a, a UFO that was parked outside of our military base. They had a whole hearing with those guys right. and they were ignored after that came out. You know, I mean, there are tons of old whistleblowers that have way more stuff going on that even Goresh had. And the only reason why it's taken seriously now is because of that Time magazine, uh, Time, uh, you know, uh, uh, New, New, New York, York Times. Times, New York Times. Yeah. And now with all of this new stuff. So David is an yeah. old yeah. whistleblower in my book. And, Amen. And there is Vince finally does come out. I'll be like. Yeah, no shit, guys. They're here, and they've been here. You know, I, I come Carol on, Carol Ann. Carol Ann, can I back up what Vince just said? I, I told this on the Matthew Cox podcast. He, Vince is so spot on with, oh my god, a member of the of the government is coming clean about aliens. They've been doing that since like fifty five. Right? I mean, how how many how many senior citizen men and women? sitting on their porch, retired in Iowa or Montana, wearing flannel shirts with years to live, with nothing to lose or gain, look in the camera since 1955 and tell the American public, um, I saw the craft. I loaded the bodies. I was at the autopsy. I touched the metal. I looked inside. I flew the bodies. I bum, bum, I saw the video. I saw the film. I've seen the paperwork. My butt. How many people who are senior citizens, total salt of the earth credibility, has to have to come forward for the past 70 years for Ricky people to Deer wake up. Kennedy. And Vince is right on the money. Vince, Ricky David Grush, David Grush is going to line Kennedy. up 100 people. Intelligent wow. people. I mean, it's so, yeah, yeah they're all nuts. Yeah. It's all swamp gas. They're all on drugs. They're all desperate for attention. Right. While they're dying in their 80s yep. and 90s. You know, it's ridiculous. If exactly. you want Goresh wrong, give him the skiff, give him, let, let him pass on the information that he said he would get right after the hearing. But no, his clearance was refused. Why? Now, part of that is he gave away a lot of secrets of where these governments are getting their money. 
which is skimming off the top, which is illegal. It's all misappropriation of funds. Exactly. But give him the skiff if you want to. Eight trillion since 1947. Right. Eight trillion. That's Vince. crazy. Eight trillion. I give mean, the man roll for that. Skiff. If you want Mike West to come on, have Mike West and all the other skeptic, uh, you know, guys that are highly intelligent. Neil deGrasse Tyson, who said he needs to have tea with the alien to be convinced. All yeah. these guys go out and 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 why don't you? You know, like uh, Michu Kaku, who who also is a great scientist, if I'm massacring his yeah. name, um, you know, at least he has an open mind to it. Yep. You know, at least he has possibilities right. of why this might be going on. Okay? You know, another, I, I think, I think another important thing to think about, if you notice, they've, they've done a lot of surveys recently. Do pe- why aren't, why isn't the public being affected by this UAP information? Yeah. People yeah. just don't exactly. We're numb because we're numb. Exactly. We're numb. We're numb. We've had decades of this. Decades of it. Can you Nobody imagine Bill? Can you imagine Bill Clinton? Politics. Bill Clinton being arrested on the Monica Lewinsky and going to court in in ninety. We would have we would have had to have CPR falling off our couch. Now a sitting former president gets arrested. He's in court arrested three times. Eh, aliens. Eh. You know we want to watch Orange County Housewives. And we are so numb and desensitized. So to the government who tried to desensitize us for 80 years, exactly. you did a great job. And they've great got job. all this other PSYOP stuff going on to divert us from the truth, right. you know, whether it's climate change yeah. or whether the whole globe's on fire. I don't know what's happening, but, yeah. you yep. know, so think about yeah. it. You've got a public, a global public that doesn't care if these aliens are here or real or fake or whatever. I mean, what do they need? Like one to literally hover over their house and beam them out? So like- You need, you need them to disrupt their Wi-Fi or yeah. come down and, and be above their house <laughs> and mushroom clouds on the horizon. Then all of a Love sudden it. people wake up. That's the only time people wake up. Vince, all Vince, I, 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 That's it. You know, we're, we are numb. Vince, we're Stupid. Vince, that is so funny. I live, I'm not bragging. I'm just making context here. I live in the area where all the all the uh, John Hughes movies were filmed. It's the North Shore of Chicago. And maybe not in my immediate neighborhood, but it's where all the CEOs and the PhDs and the old money Chicago people live in these seven, $10 million mansions. And I always say, it's so funny you said that. I said, the only way you're going to get these CEOs and their penny loafers to take to the streets is disrupt their their cell phone or Wi-Fi service. <laughs> I've been saying that for years. So oh, great minds think alike. I mean, so didn't we have that. UAPs that were um, disabling nukes at our military base? Yes. Yeah. I mean, yes. it's not... These were yeah. government officials coming out, credible people saying that this right. happened, and people just don't care. They and that that well, it's cognitive. cognitive Carol Ann, it's cognitive dissonance. Absolutely. You know, I I, I have a I have a I have a, a psychology degree, uh, uh, for, and part of it was from a, a diploma mill, but I still have a psychology degree. You know, we are we are only we only can deal with and relate with what we've been told from childhood, what is familiar right. and what is safe with us and what is familiar with us. This is not familiar. So your brain, unless you're a very rare species or bird, bird meaning, you know, character, unless you're a very rare person, you are going to deflect this. You're going to give the ad hominem tax that Vince was talking about. Fake, <laughs> fake, fake, you know, it's fake. Um, you, the, the People's brains are not going to let them absorb. Yet, I find it funny. Somebody laughs at aliens are real. And then on Sunday, go to church and listen to stories from the Bible and the Quran, a Catholic school altar boy. So I, I can say this, that our these stories in the Bible are wild giants and, and, you know, something being the world being created in seven days and, and Moses and Jesus appearing for four days to the, to the disciples. I mean, wild stories. We believe those. From people from 2,500 years ago, we we accept that package of stories without questioning them one bit. 
we right. quest, we we believe in them so fervently that we're actually willing to be displeasurable to and even kill someone who doesn't believe in our beliefs. That's scary. That's true. But yet, an, a, a so being true. from another, a being from another solar system visiting our planet, like we did in the 1800s, uh, in in the Amazon, that when we've gone to Mars, as Jeff Cesario would say, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've gone to Mars. We have a craft that has left the solar system. We can't even thin out traffic at a Dodgers game. Right. So if we can do it, yeah. certainly societies a thousand right. years, 10,000 years ahead of us can send, you know, craft to this planet. Give me a break. Well, I'm going to I'm going to say I'm going to say something a little woo woo. Um, when I first saw that video, I, I, I'm an empath and, and I read people like spot on most of the time when i saw that video there was something in its face i can't put my finger on it whether it was an emotion an expression something vincent that yes. gave me yes. the Thank chills you. and i'm not saying this because i'm john's friend and i interviewed him i'm telling you as a person who knows how to read people done it my whole life there was something in its face. So if the animatronic people, whatever they did, an excellent job at displaying this, or if this is a real alien, yes. I believe it's real. Thank you. Because it had some nuance of pain, of fear. I felt something from it. John, I don't know. You can speak to that. Carol Ann, you zoom in. You, you zoom that creature's face at the end of the film. Five out of seven people say, oh, my God, he looks exasperated. He goes exactly. like this, like this. Like, oh, thank God this is over. An animatronic guy is embarrassed. Well, he of thought that? of everything. I'd say, I'd say that's the greatest animatronic Absolutely. person in humanity. You took a puppet from 91 and conveyed exhaustion and, 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 and exasperation. Well, hats off to you, buddy. Or, yeah, and or then sister. when it was in distress. I, I don't know how they did that. I agree because yes. when it was in distress, I was like at the edge of my seat, like when I watched somebody getting beat up or something, yeah. and I'm feeling this right. empathy for this right. creature, and it was just it blew me away. Well, I mean, we um, showed an EMT or Sean. Wait, wait, let me say one more thing. Sean Morton just showed the monitor to an EMT. He said, "Sorry," he said that. Look, I don't know what that is, but that's some sort of cardiac event. Mm. So I, it, it's. How they did this is incredible, and you're right. The the I saw exasperation and like defeat on that on that right. Bean's face. So I I'll leave it at that. So Vincent, what's your take on that? Um, well, I mean, first of all, I mean, like I said, I pointed out a puppet that was done in '77 that not only showed um, um, astonishment, but a smile as well as magic as well as being almost 100% believable to me. Do you have that footage? I would love to see that. Yeah, I sent it to you in, in emails and and, um, and, you, and maybe another podcast you can show it. Okay. Um, also, um, I've made crap walk for Kevin Smith's dogma. I made a crap monster walk. I made him smile, express, faint, flutter his eyes, curl his lips. I mean, you know, I mean, but these are all possible when you go... All right, the alien is choking right now. We need to open its mouth, have uh, its eyes roll right. up in its head, or whatever. And that's what's part of the performance, right. like an actor does. A puppet can do that. Now, that's probably one of the strong suits about the puppet that, in a close up, it could look that way. If you believe it's real, I'm not going to sit here and try and convince you otherwise. No, 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 no. I'm just, okay. What about no, no, this? we're not. We're just saying, making a point. What yeah, about no, robots? When, when, it's a good point. What about the I'm, robots, though, that they make today? They're full of expression. They make them smile. Their eyes light up. on a whole other level. Yeah, you're talking millions of but dollars. But it doesn't, it doesn't strike a human chord within me. When I see these animatronics on these robots smiling and frowning, it looks so fake to me. It feels mm. fake. It doesn't Proof. feel real. Well, you're looking at snippets of a very small thing. There are moments in E.T. that made me cry, and that's a puppet. You know, I was sitting there crying yeah. about a puppet dying when he was in the hospital with uh, with uh, Henry Thomas. 
You know, so, I mean, E.T. made me cry. I thought it was a real alien when I'm looking at it. Yeah, but you know, you've was, got millions right. and millions of dollars of graphic and special effects in these movies. Like, I saw AI 15 years ago, and I was hysterical weeping, but I knew that it was not real. Like, your brain knows when things are real, when it, when it's a human being or a real emotion. Well, I'm just telling you from my point of view, it. It, it didn't look real. It looks like a puppet. Yeah. And that's my, that's my, and we that's, need to respect that. We right, need to respect exactly. that. Yeah. That's my take on that. And I don't, I can't sit here. If, if you got an emotional reaction out of it, then, then kudos to you feeling yeah. that way, Yeah. you know, to the yeah. puppeteer or whatever. Yeah. Or if it is a real alien, I feel sorry for it. Uh, but in my yeah. opinion, I'm saying it's fake. Um, could it be real? I'll be open-minded enough that if John will go out and do the hard research mm. and get what his claims are, pretty <laughs> big claims, I and did. not, you know, maybe not a documentary, but on a podcast or putting them together and we could check out their backgrounds. But this has been going on with real military people, right? Even the people at Roswell, and nobody really cares. You know, it, it's it's really unbelievable how blind we are to things. But if John could do the hard research right. on behind this film, he'll be taken more seriously. Yeah. And I agree. And well, I, I have done. I, I've, I've wrapped up five years of investigation because I can't find anybody else. And, and the fact that you popped into my life, Vince, was a, was great because we need as much on both sides, for this to be even more credible, this meaning the investigation. What is this? Okay, let's find the animatronic guy or girl. Let's find the military people. And Carol Ann, I, you know, I talked to Vince. I'm not making promises, but the, the, the greatest thing for what Vince and I could do for the country is to have Vince recreate to his ability yeah. or to his ever ability this Whole scenario. Take but a you're saying like camera. Using, using technology from the 90s. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I would like to I'm have using, the money. I, I'm using technology from the 90s today. On okay, Lobo's I would music. like to have the money. Yeah, we are going to get the money to have Vince recreate this entire three-minute scenario. Oh, that's brilliant. So it's going to happen. If I, I have to take it out of my pocket, it, I will. I am going to have Vince recreate this film, and and not to not to prove him wrong, but just to see what it. Let's see, get another representation of what a one hundred percent animatronic alien is looks like. Is what it, how it moves. That's the only one of the biggest steps towards proving or not proving this film. And that's going, folks. That's going to happen if I have to take it out of my own pocket. Oh, wow. That would be great. And I would, if I was to do it, I would copy exactly what's in the oh, film. Of course. We want Another the shading of the head. Do, yeah, I wouldn't do yes. an improved version, sculpture. or No, we don't want an improved version. Yes. Anything fancy. Right. I would recreate exactly what's in the movie. So you would have to recreate. In front of the, in front of the being. Carol Ann, I'm in front of the, the beans alien. table is a stool. If you look yeah, at it, it looks like a it looks like a laundry basket. It's a red topped stool bought at Adventure in the nineties. I write it. So we will recreate this. But yes, the the, the only caveat is is that it's got to have the near perfect uh, mimic of the shading of the head, which is if that's spray paint. God bless. It's the eyes have got to be able to reflect the monitors in the background. Um, you know, the, the, the mouth, of course. Um, I, I, I want to see the laser uh, monitor be, be being recreated. And yeah, that's, I mean, it's the only way we're going to take this, the, the next forward huge leap to see, okay, this is 100% uh, animatronic, roll the tape. Mm. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no sweat there as far as the puppet. No problem. Good. So I said any, that on any, tape. <laughs> so well, this is great. Else? Carol Ann, you have three Italians together. Everyone is cutting me down. 
on these podcasts in the chat rooms. He's crazy. He has crazy eyes. He's so exuberant. I'm like, I'm Italian. So we have like two other Italians. I That's love right. It's got so animated. It's great. Hey, folks, <laughs> when you have a bunch of dagos on, on camera, sorry. <laughs> You're so right on because we're so emotional, you know, using our hands when we talk. And right, all. right. I love it. I am so glad I did this. I am so glad I did this. And Vince, you're a great guy. Yeah. I, 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 he's like a brother from another mother. I love That's this awesome. guy. And we're going to do good things together. I hey, promise. I hope we can do this again soon. So, um, you know, please reach out if you, you have anything else that you want to add in the future. But I'd love to schedule another one of these. Totally. I would love it. No problem. We, we, Absolutely. We to some of my, you know, sightings and you know, other things too, but yeah, that would be great. I would love and that. Vince, you know, tell us your website. Of course, I'll have everything running across the screen. It's a uh, VGP effects.com. And your work is incredible. Thank you. And that's I spelled great. With, I've been on it. It's awesome. Yeah. It's spelled with an E F F E C T S. And of course so I'll, I'll have it running. I'll have it running across the screen, Vince. So great. Um, okay, thank and, you, and, Paul, and Carol so Ann, much. Yeah. My my website is huntingvictor.com, built by a guy I hired from fiverr.com. So it's still under construction. Is this Bear new? Because I don't you think know, it's you John had... Stewart. You know, I mean, I have ADD. You know, you got to see the website. It's like a four-year-old did it, but we're getting better. You're and I got the guy there. on Fiverr. So, because, <laughs> you know, I'm alligator arms, Carol Ann. You know, I don't spend money very easily. So, I so but huntingvictor.com, sure. Carol, if you want to put my email, Please feel awesome. free. Oh, I Thank can you do so that. much for having, having us on. I can put your email, John. That's okay. Oh, God, yes. Yes, absolutely. Victor, yeah. how about you? Yeah. Are you okay with email out there or no? Uh, Vincent, no. Vincent, no email, I, please. Yeah, because uh, I, I I got enough barrage in me. But, yeah, but, I yeah, can yeah. imagine. <laughs> is, My there website a is, there, anything? is there a contact on your website? I mean, sure. can people, okay, yeah. that, that'd, be the, that'd be the place then. Thank you and God bless you both. This was fantastic. Awesome. Thank awesome Thank job, Carol Ann. Thank Great you. Job. We'll talk Thank soon. You. Thanks, Vince. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you.